In the wake of the mail packages attack in the deadly synagogue shooting, many on the left are now increasingly putting the president's rhetoric under the microscope. Well, Mercedes Schlapp, White House Director of Strategic Communications, is with me now. And Mercedes, welcome back, and thank Good you for morning. your time on this Monday. How does, the, how does the White House respond to some Democrats who have given voice to that suggestion, some on the well, right as well? Well, first of all, Bill, our thoughts and prayers are with the victims and the survivors of this horrific uh, tragedy. As we know, President Trump has condemned these despicable acts and this anti-Semitic ideologue that was behind it. I mean, it's just a horrible time uh, in this country, and the president has called for unity. And I think that's a strong message that we want to be able to share with the American people at this time. I think that the Democrats' overreach, and obviously some of those uh, members in the media who also want to put the complete blame on the president, it's just simply outrageous. You know, this is a moment in time where you have a community that's suffering, and it's a time for us to come together as a country, and it's exactly what President Trump has been talking about throughout the weekend, especially after this attack in Pittsburgh, which is so heartbreaking for so many families. You know, here's just one of those speaking. This is Adam Schiff, said it on CNN on Sunday, State of the Union. The president has a pivotal role there. No one sets the tone more than the president of the United States. Uh, and the tone that he sets is one of division, often one of hatred, uh, sometimes one of incitement of violence against journalists. Uh, and there's no escaping our collective responsibility, but there's no escaping the tone that he sets uh, for the country, that his president's whole modus operandi uh, is to divide us. Uh, he gets up in the morning with new and inventive ways to divide us. What do you think of that, Mercedes? I mean, that's just, again, outrageous. You have these Democrats and some members of the media who are the ones being dividing, who are the ones demonizing this president, who's the one who's putting the blame on the president for the acts of these sick and deranged individuals. Those are just irresponsible statements coming out of the Democrats. This is a moment of unity for our country. And the Democrats continuously overplay their hand when they keep putting the blame and trying to demonize President Trump. President Trump is standing as a strong political leader. As we know, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, Ambassador Dermer came out, thanked the president for his strong stance in standing by the Jewish community. As the president has said time and time again, uh, these, these are cruel acts of evil. And this is a moment in time that we need to unite. And if the Democrats want to keep playing these political games to, to score these political points, as well as criticize, for example, you have one of the uh, presidents of the media organizations basically criticizing Press Secretary Sarah Sanders, as well as the president, blaming them for these acts of violence. I mean, that's just simply not appropriate. It's irresponsible journalism. So I think it's very important for the Democrats to find that message of unity, one that President Trump is pushing forward and focused on, and we are focused here at the White House. This well, has we, been a very sad loss um, in yeah. America, and we have to st we standing yeah. with the Jewish community. And more importantly, is that remember, this is a people of faith who want to worship without fear, a fundamental right in America, and something that we believe has to be protected. Uh, Jeff Sessions speaks in about 25 minutes in Boston, so we're going to get more from him and find out what the legal course is now for this, uh, this killer who survived that, by the way. Uh, I've got a lot of other topics. I just want to move through them quickly, okay? There's, there's word about uh, the immigration front, that there may be more troops sent to the border, more than the 800 initially announced. One suggestion's up to, up to 5,000 troops. Is that the case, Mercedes? Well, I'm not going to get into any details at this point. The Department of Homeland Security has asked for support from the Department of Defense. Department of Defense will be providing that support uh, to over to the border. Uh, as we know, uh, we're seeing these uh, what you call mini caravans coming every day, about 2,000 people, illegal aliens crossing the border. And we need to provide that support to our Custom Border Patrol agents, make sure that they are safe um, as uh, the caravan continues to make its way should to the United we, States. Should we expect some sort of executive order on this I, today I'm, or this week? I have, the, I have nothing to announce on that area. Again, uh, there, the, you know, there are discussions at this point in terms of ensuring that we're able to secure the border. Uh, it's obviously uh, an interagency process where Department of State, Department of Defense, Department of Homeland Security are involved. What we have to keep in mind here is the fact that those individuals that are in part of this this larger car caravan right now, they're violating Mexican law. They're violating international law. Uh, there's something called the first safe country. Uh, and there you have an opportunity for them to seek asylum in Mexico. Many are choosing not to. Their goal is to make it to the United States. And as the president has said, we're not going to let them in. I mean, there is a legal process in place uh, to come into the United States. 
And we want to get to the point to know that really it has been the Democrats' fault in this whole process when it comes to immigration. The president came forward with a very strong uh, plan in terms of immigration reform. Democrats denied it. Democrats are for open border. They're for increased crime. They're, it's, they're blindsided. They don't even want to deal with this issue. And let me tell you, this issue at the end of the day is about public safety. There are criminals in these caravans coming in, MS-13 gang members being stopped. Our Border Patrol agents need all the support they can get at this point. Well, and the mere fact Congress that the Democrats had a chance continue to, act to on play, it and, and, that's and, right. and have not. Now, Mercedes, two more topics here. Uh, the president's going to hit the road in a significant way. We saw him in Illinois over the weekend on Saturday. Um, I'm just looking at the Axios report from late last night. Florida, Missouri, West Virginia, Montana, Tennessee, Indiana, Ohio. I mean, the list does not stop over the next eight days. The report also suggests that if you look at the strategy for the way this is planned, that the White House is conceding the House and will now fight for the Senate, even to possibly run up the score on the Senate side. Is that true on the Pre concession President for the Trump House? never, let me tell you something about President Trump. He never gives up. And he's going to keep talking as he's going around the country, uh, wanting more Republicans to those individuals who support his policies to become part of Congress, and in essence, uh, he he understands the importance of the energy he brings to these different states. Uh, his voice is such a critical voice, especially as so he's been a unifier in the Republican Party. So the report's not true, is what Republican you're saying, Party. correct? That, that, that yeah, report that, about that the is House not, is not that true? Is, that is incorrect. The president okay. is focused, engaged in ensuring that... Uh, you know, as we know, he's defied polls before, and this is a man who's a winner and will, willing to fight to the tail end. Here is the commercial that came out online just about three hours ago. It sounds to me like it's a closing argument. Here's part of it. Watch. There's more opportunity and security to invest in the ones that matter. Look, we can't get distracted from the biggest issue, which are jobs and our kids' future. But this could all go away if we don't remember what we came from. The spot runs a minute. That's a few seconds right there. I, I understand the argument you're making about the economy, et cetera. Why is the president not featured in that spot, Mercedes? Well, I mean, you know, all campaigns are local. Uh, what I can tell you is that the president, the president is, his record is so strong. Those, when you talk about our economic su success, our booming economy, when you have an unemployment rate that's so low, impacting Hispanic Americans, African Americans, women, veterans. I, I, this, the, the untold story of the economy is one that I, we're going to keep talking about. It's something that we know is a, is a winning issue. We're helping Americans. We're putting money back into the hands of Americans. We're protecting American workers by renegotiating our trade deals. We're strong from a foreign policy standpoint. This president is one who has, uh, has a very strong agenda, okay. the winning agenda of economic prosperity, a very still, important it, message that we'll keep talking closing about. Closing argument over the next eight days. Thank you so much for your time, Mercedes. Hope you, you do so come much. back very soon from the North Lawn. Thanks. Thank you.